Welcome to Unity Church of Chatsworth Online Ministries. Alleluia. 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 From American Icon, Will Rogers. You can be on the right track and still get run over if you just sit there. The Unity Daily Word we focus on today comes to us from January 11th, 1940, and the word is strength. Our affirmation? In an understanding of divine love, I have no enemies. To God, all people are alike. All are God's children. No one is more favored, more loved than another. He maketh his son to rise on the evil and the good and sendeth rain on the just and the unjust. When we believe we have enemies, we not only separate ourselves from the benefits derived from brotherly love, but we shut ourselves away from relationship with God. As children of God, we can have, for the asking, a life of radiant joy. We can forgive an unkindness, completely overlook a slight, look past a cruel deed as we remember that deep within the heart of everyone we contact is the good spirit of God. What we call cruelty and hardness is but ignorance, the result of a person's not knowing their oneness with us. When we forgive them and see them as a brother or sister so that we no longer have hard feelings toward them, we are helping them silently to discover their true nature as a God-like being. We have no enemies when we are filled with understanding love. Our scripture with this daily word comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 5, verses 44 and 45. Love your enemies, that ye may be children of your Father. Our word for today is strength. And our affirmation, in an understanding of divine love, I have no enemies. And so it is. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed it be thy name. Till kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debt, as we also forgive our debtors. And leave us not into temptation, but deliver us from error. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory for ever. Amen. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord. Paraphrasing from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 46. If you love those who love you, what will be your reward? Not 
Do not even the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet your brothers, what are you doing more than others? Do not even the non-believers do the same. From the Revealing Word by Charles Fillmore, co-founder of Unity. The metaphysical meaning of love, divine love. Divine love is impersonal. It loves for the sake of loving. It is not concerned with what or who it loves, nor with the return of love. Love is an inner quality that sees good everywhere. It insists that by refusing to see anything other than good, it causes this quality to appear uppermost in itself and in all things. Good morning. Good morning and God bless you. Good morning and God bless you. And how are you today, Michelle? I'm doing just fantastic. How are you? Good, good, good. Good, <laughs> good. The title of our lesson today, Michelle, mm -hmm. Pray for Neighbors. And today and every day, I am miracle-minded. Absolutely. We take a deep breath in right now, right where we are. Yes. Our power for the month, Michelle. Yes, our power for the month is divine will. The disciple is Matthew. The body part is the center of the brain, and mm -hmm. the color is silver. The color is silver. Yes. All right. Before our affirmation today, I would like to ask Michelle to lead us in a mini breath exercise. A mini breath exercise. All yes. right. Well, let's become settled in our seats, in our comfort, in a comfortable position, but relaxed. And allow ourselves to just inhale a good deep breath, allowing that breath to just kind of relax. This is our physical breath, relaxing our body. So take a deep breath in and exhale. Yes. And then our second breath is a mental breath. And we talk about this as the breath that allows us just to clear ourselves out, clear out those things that we're thinking about that may be holding our attention right now so that we can focus completely on our lesson. And we take a deep breath in mm -hmm. and exhale, just allowing anything that's bothering us, anything that's holding us to float away. And our final breath is our spiritual breath. And this is the breath where we allow ourselves to connect with spirit, allowing that breath to move not into our lungs, up through our body, and seeing that breath connecting through our chakra at the top. And we breathe that deeply in. And as we exhale, we say the name of God in many languages. Which is? Ah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Michelle. Mm -hmm. The affirmation that we have designed today, we say and pray together, yes. Michelle. I, I am aware, aware of divine, divine will, will and, and neighbors. neighbors. I am aware of divine will. The highest, the highest of the highest. Yes, that will that is present right here and right now before each one of us. And today we are being inspired uh, to change the word to neighbor today mm -hmm. from all around us, from perhaps you and you, and yes, you. And so again, we say and pray to get together today our affirmation for today's service. Michelle? I am. I am. Aware. Aware. Of divine will. Of divine will. And neighbors. And neighbors. Or, yes. And our neighbors. And we say thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Yes, Michelle, we are here to evoke the presence of the Most High. And as we do so, we are smiling today. We've had quite a, a number of quotes today for mm -hmm. today's service, Michelle. Oh, we had the one from uh, uh, Dr. Abraham Lowe. Yes. The will to serve mm -hmm. or the will to, I'm going to use the term, 
go into action. There you go. To okay. go into action today. We mm -hmm. had the quote all about oh, the trigger. The trigger. What was that about? <laughs> Fight, oh, the reaction. flight, yes. yes, reaction, fight, flight, or freeze. How do we react to a stressful situation? Yes. And sometimes those triggers occur, and I, I heard you say sometimes we are aware, but many times we're not aware when that trigger occurs. It's an automatic response, science tells us. <laughs> so we're on our spiritual journey here, yes. and we're going to pause and really take a look at what we have been talking about for at least a couple of months now, which is all about evoking the presence of the Most High. Yes. Uh, that is our spiritual highest uh, quality or attribute that we are reaching for and searching for and open to and allow to embrace today, Michelle. And that's quite the mouthful. <laughs> that's that's quite good. the mouthful today. And for mm -hmm. those of you who are the grammarians out there in uh, in the broadcast or the podcast or the uh, presentation world are probably very uh, aware of from time to time Reverend John tends to uh, perhaps not practice that best of the best grammar. <laughs> uh, but I want to thank today. You do okay, uh, Reverend John. <laughs> thank you, uh, Reverend Cindy Yamamoto and her Sunday lesson a few weeks ago where she used neighbor Michelle. Mm hmm we're going to bless our neighbors. We're going to try to understand our neighbors. Mm -hmm. And so she did not use the Sermon on the Mount uh, Bible term, which was enemy. Mm -hmm. Enemy, Michelle. Right. And, you know, I want to actually uh, give give a, a shout out to Michelle also, <laughs> uh, because uh, I think that last Sunday service, she talked about perhaps uh, changing in enemy mm. or at least rephrasing it or putting it at a, a different way well and the daily word tells us that we don't really have any enemies we have neighbors who may or may not have agreements with us they may have disagreements with us so yes and we are aware of words michelle yes. and the power of words and the and power of words we, we were talking about similes and mm -hmm. metaphors mm -hmm. and as we are presenting our lessons i'm going to say we are aware if not awakened to a higher sensitivity. <laughs> okay. And we also know that words can be those triggers. When we talk about stressful reactions yes. and the fight, flight, or freeze, words can trigger those reactions as well. So we need to just kind of have an awareness of, of how we respond to situations. Okay. Yes. Okay. And our dear one, you know, I have a dear one from France, Michelle, and he sometimes says uh, things like, uh, I know what you're saying. And I know the words and I know the concepts, but sometimes it just doesn't go down mm. so easy mm. or easily mm -hmm. using, a, again, this is food. The mm -hmm. French are wonderful <laughs> with food, but the idea that these words, they don't digest well. They don't digest yes. well. So it's, yes. a, it's important to modify them, perhaps. Mm -hmm. It's important to be aware that sometimes they can be triggers uh, for other events. Mm -hmm. And Michelle, you used that medical term or that term about the brain where it was uh, something about hijack. Oh, well, yes. When we talk about the, the fight, fight or flight response that, um, and we just, we just mentioned it, that the amygdala, the part of the brain that is really our, if you want to call it our animal part of our brain, that is the reaction type of part of our brain, which reacts without stopping to think about what's, what is being done to us physically or mentally. And that is the, the part that gets triggered, that, that reaction part. And that's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> and again, in our affirmation, I want to say, Michelle, we're yes. using uh, spiritual mm -hmm. uh, values and we're using human as well. So we have them uh, just opposed to one another or perhaps uh, they are where they're supposed to be, Michelle. Right. And, and you know, as we're talking about... What is God's the, will? The power of divine will, which is divine will, God's yes, will. That's thank God's you, will. That we make choices every day. Every and we day. have the opportunity mm -hmm. when we feel triggered, perhaps, to make a different choice than what that um, amygdala, that brain reaction, that snap reaction is. We have, cho we have the will, divine will, to make a different choice. Wow, wonderful, Michelle. Okay. Again, deep breath in. Our three points for today's lesson are as follows. Yes. 
point number one is the Bible scripture. And we've been talking about portions of the Sermon on the Mount. And uh, one of the things that we mentioned is, it, it, is, is this your divine idea? And we'll talk about that a little bit. Okay. Point number two, our neighbors need prayer too, mm -hmm. even when we're in disagreement. So we're talking about that again this week. We've spoken about that during the year, during the month. Mm -hmm. And point number three, as we talk about every week in 2024, are we ready to let peace begin with us, to sit in our place of meditation, to sit in our place of breathing in peace with these ideas? Thank you, Michelle. Point number one, the Sermon on the Mount from the book of Matthew and again from the book of Luke, mm -hmm. in, in which uh, that's very well known uh, presentation or sermon from Jesus, and uh, I'm going to say that uh, here we are seeing Jesus, the revolutionary, yes, the re revolutionary thinker yes. again, because we know that the Old Testament writers and the way of uh, handing out, I'm going to call justice, sometimes was all about an eye for an eye, mm -hmm. or you know, uh, if you if you hit me, I'm going to hit you back. Yeah, revenge. Revenge. Mm -hmm. And yet we have this wonderful master teacher talking about love those who love you, love those who don't love you. Mm -hmm. And uh, the word is enemy. But uh, I liked, again, Reverend Cindy Yamamoto and the idea that we're going to love neighbors or love neighbors as yourself, that's a, that's a revolutionary kind of uh, thought mm -hmm. uh, in the right here, in the right now. Right. And so, again, uh, thank you, Reverend Cindy. <laughs> and so uh, as we are preparing to move forward with our lesson again, even the tax collectors can have a certain regard for one another. I thought that that was interesting because, uh, again, our power for the month mm -hmm. is all about Matthew. Yes. And it's yes. about that level of will that from time to time, I'm going to say it's on a teeter-totter, mm. uh, Michelle. It's a, uh, yes, I can function at the higher level, the, the level of spirit, yes. the level of the divine. And yet the other side of the coin, I'm going to say, is the human side mm -hmm. in which there is, I'm going to say, a degree of understanding, if not compassion okay. for uh, that, that person who is, I'm going to call it triggered, and is triggered right now. Mm -hmm. And as I say that, you know who you are. <laughs> and uh, I have a, a wonderful teacher who's, uh, who's available every Sunday morning. <laughs> and sometimes he's talking about right now, he's talking about our present times, Michelle. Mm -hmm. He's also talking about whatever may happen or whatever decision that we make, there will be a decision afterwards mm -hmm. that we're going to have to deal with right. as we move forward as a nation and as a people. And so I'm grateful for, for all of that. I'm going to call it uh, divine idea and the here on earth wisdom mm -hmm. uh, that is coming into our expression right now. And again, I want to, again, refer to the Sermon on the Mount. And those of you who are interested, you can find it in Matthew. The book, the Gospel of Matthew, mm -hmm. and the Gospel of Luke. Of Luke. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Michelle. Sure. Point number two. And I think you just kind of moved into point number two, actually, as you started talking about um, your your um, Sunday morning spiritual leader who who talks about our neighbors and what's going on in our, as you always say so often, unprecedented times that we're facing right now. So we're. Our neighbors need prayers, too. And who is our neighbor? That's the question. Thank you, Michelle. Yes. And our neighbors, and we talked about it perhaps this a, a, a little bit last Sunday. Sometimes the neighbor is the actual physical neighbor next door. Mm -hmm. And yet we have that, that person within our own household or within our own family unit. Or I'm going to say are a part of our church family that, uh, you know, we, we say that in New Thought we're on the same page that we're progressive Christianity sometimes, mm -hmm. and yet there are members of our church family, and sometimes I hear, and I continue to hear, Michelle, uh, 
words that are expressed from a, I'm going to call it a literal perspective and a literal understanding of the Bible. I'm going to call that a the fundamentalist okay. perspective. Right. And I take a deep breath when I hear that, and I say a little prayer, <laughs> and I continue, and I find an opportunity from time to time to say, we need to re remind one another that we are progressive Christians and that we find many of us certainly interpret the Bible, what's that word? Metaphysically, yes. Michelle. Yes. Or certainly symbolically. Mm -hmm. Metaphysically or symbolically. I'm taking a nice deep breath in and I, I'm going to say at this point, again, the Sermon on the Mount is in the Bible. Mm -hmm. Okay, our interpretation of the Bible from literal to metaphysical is something I'm going to say that, Michelle, uh, we are unique from time to time from that perspective. In the Sermon on the Mount, you know, the basic concepts, there's a lot of meat in there, as you said. There, you know, if you take the time to read it, there's a lot of meat in there. But basically, we go back to saying what Jesus was doing in that was he was he was inviting us, inviting the people that he was talking to and inviting us to focus on or at least take into consideration the idea of love and forgiveness and embracing everyone, embracing everyone in our love and prayer life. Point number three. Point number three, as we talk about every week, is are you ready to let peace begin with you? This is kind of, you know, the things that we're talking about right now, as we talked about last week and we talk about this week, these are some um, kind of tough concepts, you know, especially as we talked about in unprecedented times we're going through. There are a lot of conflict, conflicting information and conflicting views. And so is it possible to sit in a peaceful place? And if we can't extend an embracing love to those who agree or disagree with us, can we at least hold them in prayer? Can we see them as our neighbor? Because as we ask the question, isn't everyone our neighbor? Or as Jesus tells us, are we not to love all people because all are children of God? Can we sit in peace with those ideas. Thank you, Michelle. Yes. It is our prayer that our lesson has been a blessing today for you and you and you as we now move into a time of a summary of today's lesson. All right. Point number one, our Sermon on the Mount. And, and Reverend John talked about the fact that, yes, the Old Testament talked about revenge talked about an eye for an eye, whereas we had the new master teacher, Jesus, who talked to us about a new idea of love and, and embracing others. Our neighbors need prayer too is our point number two. And the question we ask is, who is our neighbor? Who is our neighbor? Our neighbor can be our family member. Our neighbor can be someone who lives next door. Our neighbor can be anyone who we come in contact with. And point number three, are you ready to let peace begin with you? Are you ready to sit with these ideas and be able to be at peace with knowing that we are all God's children? Thank you, Michelle. We are all God's children. Oh, let's breathe that in for yes. a moment. And we, we know that uh, God's will is for us to be happy and and balanced and successful and and be at a place of uh, good I'm gonna call it mental health Michelle yes and so we arrive at a point today that we are prepared to close as we become still with prayerful hands we focus on our lower chakras and we see ourselves balanced and we see ourselves uh, in a place of divine meditation mm -hmm. and stillness and we feel that energy now, that joy, that at one minute now move from our lower chakras into our heart chakras. And we feel the love all around us, above us, below us, to each side, as us. And we remember to smile as that, that feeling of joy moves into our throat chakra and into our third eye. And we can see more clearly as again that energy now moves into our crown chakra the top of our head and we feel that that divine ray 
and we acknowledge and know the will of God is present right here and right now. And again, we know that, and the Bible tells us that these bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit. And we feel that divine love and joy and that prosperity again move into our heart chakra and we feel the love, we feel the renewed vitality all around us again and as us, as it now again settles into our lower chakras and into our feet and we feel balanced and grounded. Mm. And yes, we move again to saying and praying our affirmation for today's lesson. Michelle? I am aware. I am aware. Of, of divine, divine will, will and, and neighbors. And neighbors. And yes, we say, thank you, God. 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 And so it is. Amen. It is not I, but the Christ within who does the work. The Prayer for Protection, authored by the Reverend James Dillett Freeman. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is and all is well. And so it is. Amen. Our offertory blessing today, together. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, all that I receive. I praise, give thanks, and am glad. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Amen. The Daily Word is reproduced with permission of Unity, publisher of The Daily Word. Website dailyword.com.